Hello. I think I'm live. This is my very first time going live. So I'm just going to give it a minute, let anyone who needs to come in, come in, and then we'll get started. Hello to one person, two people. Okay, some people are seeing it. Hi, thanks for coming to the first Shelf Stuff at Home video for the Shelf Stuff at Home series. Just give it another 30 seconds or so and we'll get started. I feel like I should have some waiting music, like the elevator. <laughs> Just something to keep us occupied while I wait for it to hit 60 seconds so I can officially get started. 55. Hello to the people I see coming in. Thank you for tuning in. So my name is Talia. I work on the Shelf Stuff team. And as you can see, I am not with the Shelf Stuff group right now. I'm at home, as I'm sure a lot of you are right now. We're all practicing social distancing because it's just safer for everybody if we stay in our homes, keep safe. And while that can be really great in a lot of ways, I know for some people, it can be pretty weird too, especially if you're not used to being inside so much. So Right now, we're just trying to find new ways to connect with everybody and keep the content coming from Shelf Stuff, especially because we really want to make sure that everyone is still involved and engaged while we can. So I thought it would be really fun to just kind of come up with an idea for what we can all do while we're home that's book related, but isn't necessarily just sitting and reading books because we might have a little bit of extra time now that we're not driving to school and everything. but we don't have so much extra time that we can just suddenly sit around watching all the movies and reading all the books that we haven't been able to read before. <laughs> so one thing that I thought would be really fun to do while you're sitting at home and you finally have the time to look at it is organizing your bookshelf. So in today's episode, I'm going to be giving you all of my best ideas for organizing your bookshelf. Right now, my bookshelf has been pretty much organized in the exact same way since I first put it together, which is by series. So I have a ton of different series. I have all of my Phantom Stallion books, my series of Unfortunate Events books, Goosebumps, Warriors, whatever it may be. And I think I like having it grouped by series because... A, it's really easy for you to find where all of your books are. You know exactly where book number three in the series is going to be if it is just perfectly in its series right there. Also, everything kind of looks of a piece because the series is all perfectly together. So it doesn't look weirdly cluttered or haphazard. Your bookshelf just looks very in sync with itself. And the last part is kind of because I like showing off that I have all of the books in the series or I just think it's kind of like a collection. So even though I have a lot of books that are one-offs or standalones that don't belong in a series, I don't actually put those on my bookshelf because I just think it looks stranger to have those by themselves. And I like having series because it makes everything look like I have collections. So that's just me. But it's probably one of the most basic ways that you can organize your bookshelf. And that's why I thought this would be the perfect time to think of some new original ways to organize your bookshelf that isn't just by all of these books belong together because they're in the same series or they're by the same author. So the newest way that I would think of organizing your bookshelf is by color. So for those of you who like aesthetically pleasing bookshelves or for your bookshelf to actually be a focal piece of the room, you should definitely consider organizing it by color. I think with a white bookshelf especially, organizing by color can look really nice and you can do it in a few different ways. You could do all of your books in sections by color. So all of your red books, all of your orange books, et cetera, et cetera. Or you could try to do it more in a gradient or like an ombre sort of way. So you would put red and orange together and then start mixing in a little bit of the yellows, greens and blues together, just so it's not 
exactly perfectly all yellow, all green, but it still gives you the same kind of feel of it being similar colors. Or if you want to be original and you don't feel like you have a bunch of different books of different colors, say you just have no books that have white spines, you could come up with your own specific color pattern that you would then follow. So maybe you just happen to have a lot of red and blue and yellow covers. Do red, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow. Maybe you really love showing off purple and you have a lot of purple books have a whole shelf dedicated to purple. It can be anything you like, and it might even be colors that you think kind of go with your room or go with other items in your room. But either way, that can be super aesthetically pleasing. And it can just be a fun way to kind of remind you of what books you have that you haven't thought about in a long time. I know when I was looking at my bookshelf for this video, there were a lot of books in there that I realized I haven't touched in so long. So looking at your bookshelf and reorganizing it according to color might be the perfect time for you to see some of the books that you haven't looked at in a hot minute. So if you don't think you want to organize by color, you could also arrange by size. So you would be really surprised how many different sizes there are of books. I mean, you have the standard hardcover and paperback sizes, but there are still so many books that are just extra tall or extra small. And if you have a bookshelf that you can actually move the shelving on, you might have to get an adult to help you, but you could organize your books by size on each different shelf and then actually move the shelving so that it fits perfectly. And that can be really helpful for if you have a bunch of paperbacks that are really short or a bunch of super tall, bigger books that need to have the extra space, and then you could just move the shelving so that it has enough space and it's not all cramped, you know? Another interesting thing that I was thinking about with sizing though, is you could try and make kind of art with your sizing. So imagine the ends of the bookshelf, you have super tall books on the end. And then as you go into the center of the bookshelf, they get smaller and smaller. And by the time you get to the middle of the bookshelf, you have this really nice curve look. If you have enough books and you have all of those different sizes, it can look really interesting. And you could also even put something in the middle that of that empty space at the end. So it's just kind of like a way to decorate and show off some other piece of items in your bookshelf that isn't a book. If you wanted to go the opposite route, you could also start in the middle of the bookshelf with the tall books and then on the outside they get smaller. So that would be more of like a pyramid shape, which would be kind of cool too. The only thing that I was considering with that is that gravity might not be your best friend in that case. I feel like some of the books in the center that would be really tall might end up just kind of flopping onto the smaller ones. but. This is something that you'll figure out once you test it out for yourself. So if you think that might look kind of cool, test it out and let me know if gravity worked in your favor or not. And if you don't want to order by size, by color, by series, and you honestly don't feel like you have that many books to showcase in the first place, you might want to try stacking them. So instead of them showing up like they would in the library or in the bookstore, you could just kind of have them like this. And I think you have a really wide book on the bottom. So like, let's imagine we have graveyard book here and then they get smaller as you go up. That is a nice look too. And then you can put something on top of that or you can have some extra space on the sides for you to put things in. And it's also just an interesting way to showcase some of the titles, I think. It's easier to read it when it's flat versus sideways. So if you don't have a ton of space, or I mean, you don't have a ton of books, you have plenty of space and not enough books to fill them all, you might want to consider showing them off in a flattened way. And of course, you don't have to have it be the bulkiest book on the bottom and the smallest book on the top. I just think that looks kind of nice, but you could try it any way you like. So we have size, color, series, Oh, okay. There is another way that I have seen some people start organizing their bookshelves. And 
this is a little scary to me because I'm the one of the people who likes seeing every single one of my books and knowing exactly where they are. But if you feel like your bookshelf looks very cluttered and there's just too many different sizes and too many different types of books and nothing you do makes it look organized, you might want to try putting your books pages out. So it's something I haven't considered and I think it's probably easier for paperback books that don't have the covers hanging off of the sides. But it can be an interesting way to keep your bookshelf looking of a piece. So it's all very neutral. You would just have a bunch of tan pages sticking out and it's interesting. You know, it might get someone to look at your bookshelf and be more interested in pulling a book out because they have no idea what they're going to get. So that's just one thing you can consider doing. It's kind of a newer way of showing off bookshelves. And I think people are into it because you don't have to dedicate yourself to a certain theme. You just put them in and you have the pages facing out and it's all one color essentially and you're done. But for someone like me who just really wants to be able to see what books I have, that probably wouldn't be the best suggestion for me. Yeah, so we have a bunch of different ways for you to organize your bookshelf. And if you're, oops, sorry, just heard a big noise. <laughs> but if you have any other suggestions, make sure to send them over our way. We have an Instagram account at The Shelf Stuff that it would be great if you could follow so that you don't miss any of our other upcoming videos. I know I'm going to be coming on again next week just to talk to you all probably two on Tuesdays or Thursdays. And we have a lot coming up. And I know that it's probably very difficult or very different for a lot of you right now. If you're at home, I know it's different for me, but hopefully this has given you some ideas on organizing your bookshelf. I would love to see any pictures if you organize your bookshelf going by one of my suggestions. And who knows, maybe I will finally decide to organize my own bookshelf in a different way than all by series because... I've had it that way for a long time. <laughs> okay, so I will talk to you all next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at The Shelf Stuff. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss any of our other videos coming up. All right, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.